I am Noemi Duran. I am a biologist and a Christian who believes in the Bible, and I study animal behavior. I trust the Bible and what it says about origins because I trust the author of the Bible. So even if there are some things that I don't have all the answers for, I believe that God is the author of the Bible. And because I know him, I trust what he says when he talks about how he did the world, even if we don't have all the scientific details in the story. I'm a biologist, and for a biologist, it is easy to see God and his can almost in everything. When you study even the smallest cells and you see these molecular machines inside of them, you see a lot of design, a lot of engineering that, and you can take that to every level. You see that in the animals, in their capacities, the ability of a bird to fly, that's, that's amazing. And things like even ecosystems, how everything is coordinated and everything works well because every piece is in, in its exact place. So I see design there. And this design has to come from a, from a very, very wise mind, much wiser than, than ours, and that, that must be God. I used to work in a, in a zoo. I was the um, director of education for a zoo, and I worked with other colleagues where they were not uh, Christians or believers in creation. And I actually had a very good relationship with them. I know that's not the case for everyone, but it was for me. And in my experience, I think uh, there are two things that are very important to have this good relationship with, with your co co-workers who, are, who maybe believe something different than you. And one of them is respect. If you respect them, they, they will probably respect you. And the other one is that if they get to know you first and they know that you are a person that they can trust, that you are a good scientist, that you do your work well, then it's easier that they understand or that they accept your, your beliefs, even if they may think that they are a little crazy or something like that. But uh, it's, it's easier for them if they know you and trust you first than to see that maybe it's, there is something in your beliefs that is worth to know more about. Natural selection is usually described as the guiding force of evolution. But if you actually think about that, uh, it's, it's difficult that it actually can do what it's supposed to do. Sometimes we think about evolution like this ghost or invisible force that goes uh, uh, searching for weak animals or unfit animals and, and kills it, kills them. But actually, what kills the weak zebra in the pack it's the lion. It's not natural selection. Natural selection is just a description of the process, what is happening there. And what happens is that from a population with uh, different characteristics, different features, some of them disappear. So natural selection is actually uh, eliminating some of the diversity that you find in a population. And evolution is actually just the opposite. Evolution is about creating something new, about creating more diversity. And if we look at natural selection, it's not doing that. It's taking away some of the diversity of the populations. And because it doesn't have any foresight or any purpose, it cannot actually create new, new adaptations or transform animals in something that is more fit. It's just choosing from 
whatever is there, what is best in specific circumstances. This is a tough question. When we read the Bible, when we read uh, Genesis 1, we uh, interpret and we see that everything was very good, that uh, animals were supposed to eat grass, to eat plant material. So we can state that there were no predatory animals or no parasitic animals who were harming other animals in the beginning, in the original plan. But then when sin came in, then everything changed in nature. And God cursed the, the serpent, the, the, the human beings there, the earth starting to change. We see that even plants would grow thorns and thistles, so everything changed. So uh, parasitic and predatory animals are something that are a result of sin. But the exact mechanism by that, that they appear there, we don't know. We don't know exactly if, if God made some changes, direct changes in them, so they could adapt to the post-sin world, or if he already had uh, given them the genetic information to change after the possibility, because he knew that there was a possibility of sin, of if Satan had something to do with it, we don't know. The exact mechanism, we don't know, but we don't think that God created these animals that were killing other animals or making uh, suffering other animals from the beginning in, in his original creation. It actually depends on which animals we are talking about. If we, all, if, we, if we are talking about social animals, so animals that live in, in social groups like um, dolphins or elephants or chimpanzees, then scientists have uh, discovered that most of the interactions that they have with other members of their group, they are actually um, very pro-social. And that means that they are cooperating with each other. So they are working together to get, to get something that is good for, for both of them or the th three of them that are participating in, in a specific action. But also that they are helping each other even in an altruistic way. So an animal can share it, uh, its food with another from the group or uh, it can do some other altruistic behaviors like helping f helping an, um, a member of the group that it's hurt or that has some problem or when they fight, because sometimes they fight, to try to make peace between two of them that, are, that had a fight or mm, give consolation to the one that lost the fight. All these things that we usually see in, in human beings trying to make peace and even understand what is going on in the mind of the other, what we call empathy, these animals have also these this same behaviors. We see exactly the same patterns in them. Epigenetics is a branch of uh, genetics that actually studies what is above or in the outside of DNA. So DNA is the blueprint of an organism and all the instructions to make that organism are the genes that are in the DNA encoded with four letters, uh, A, G, T, C, and that's the information to give you your blue eyes or your head or your, your features. But then, uh, recently, scientists have discovered that there are mechanisms to control the expression of these genes uh, outside of the DNA. So there are some tags, some molecules that are located in several places of the DNA 
that make that some of these genes get locked. So even if you have the information there, that information cannot be read, cannot be expressed. So it's like it's not there. And some other places, these these little tags make them to be open and to be ready to use. So this is very important because these little tags in the DNA are put in and take out <clears throat> depending on environmental factors. So what you eat or if you're stressed or if you take drugs, all of these things can affect which tags are in your DNA. And the second important thing is that, is that these tags are going to be inherited by your children. So they can go on for several generations. So what you are doing, what you are eating is affecting the expression of the genes of your children or even of your grandchildren. To say that we shouldn't be caring for the environment because it's going to end up burned every anyway. It's like to say that because we are all going to die at the end, we shouldn't be uh, taking care of our quality of life. Or why should I clean my house if it's going to end up dirty at the end at the end of the day? This kind of this line of, of reasoning, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, we're living here. This is our home. This planet is, is our home. And as long as we're living here, we have to take care of it. It's our responsibility. God gave us humans the responsibility to take care of the rest of creation. And we are doing a really bad job with that. We have caused all these uh, changes and because of these changes, environmental problems that we have created, people are suffering and animals are suffering. So in some places there is no clean water to drink. We have caused changes in, in the climate patterns that are killing people in catastrophes and with, with changes in the, in the weather. And all of that is our responsibility. So we should be doing something about that because we are followers of Christ. And when Jesus was here living in, in this earth, he did whatever he could to, to eliminate the suffering of the people that, that were around him. So we should be against any type of suffering and we should be working actively for the people who are suffering because of, of the environmental problems and also for the animals because the whole creation is, is, is groaning, it's asking for a solution and we cannot give the final solution that will be God. But in the meantime, we have to take that responsibility in our hands and we have, we have to do something and we have to do it now. 